Alright, so in this video, we're going to be talking about disk washer and shell method problems, okay? We're not going to be doing method specific problems, we're going to be simply given a problem and we have to pick a method from there and then use that method to solve. So we have our first problem up on the board, find the volume of a solid obtained by rotating about the y-axis, the region bounded by y equals negative x squared plus x x minus 8 and y equals 0. So, first off, we need to be able to graph this and we should probably start off by graphing, graphing this parabola. So, we know that this graph is going to be an upside down parabola with a y-intercept of negative 8. And we don't know what this plus 6x is going to mean here, okay? We know it's going to be some type of a horizontal shift, right? That's what that does. But we're not sure by what ex by you know to like what extent we're getting shifted over okay we know this parabola is either going to look like this or like this because it has a y-intercept of eight and it's an upside down parabola so we're going to need to now find out which parabola this is by finding our x-intercepts how we're going to do that we're going to set this equation equal to zero and what we can do is take out a negative here all right, we can factor this to be, and that means that x equals 4, x equals 2. All right, so it would be this parabola right here. We're going to have 2, and we're going to have 4. All right, great. So now we have an idea of what our graph is going to look like. So we can draw our now completed graph as... A parabola starting at negative 8 going to 2 and 4 and we have our y equals 0 line as our other bound so that we have our region right here and we're rotating about the y-axis we're rotating about this axis right here all right now the best way to do this I mean what method are we gonna use okay well since we have if we tried to could we use this method Okay, well we couldn't use this method because there's space right here, okay? There's space between our axis of rotation and our region R. We can't use, well we really can't use washer method because we have the same graph on the top as we do on the bottom if we were to uh, do our cross sections horizontally because our axis of rotation is vertical, okay? And can we do shell method? That's the last method. So. If we do shell method, then we're cutting vertically because this is a vertical axis of rotation. Okay, and we we know the height. We can find out the height. We know the radius, right? And that's basically what we need to find our volume. Okay, we're going to need to integrate with two pi times the radius times the height times our thickness, which is either going to be dx or dy. So what are we integrating with respect to, x or y? Well, since we have a vertical axis of rotation, we're going to be integrating with respect to x, okay? If it was a horizontal axis of rotation, then we're integrating with respect to y, okay? That was covered in my last video, so you can check that out uh, if you are still confused about that, okay? So if we're integrating with respect to x, uh, our bounds for this region is from 2 to 4. Okay, great. So now what is going to be our radius? Okay, that's the next step. So our radius is going to be, well, what would be this distance right here? Uh, well, that would just be x, right? That would just be x. Because that is just going to be the distance from the origin to whatever section we're taking okay and that's just x all right and what is going to be our height well our height should just be our graph all right that's just the distance from our top here to the uh, x x-axis so we substitute that in here negative x squared plus 6x minus 8 and we have a dx here because we're integrating with respect to x that also represents our thickness. Okay, so we can do our volume now and go from 2 to 4. Uh, we can pull that 2 pi out. We can distribute that x. We get negative x cubed plus 6x squared minus 8x dx. 
All right, and now let's integrate two pi times, this is going to be negative x to the fourth over four, plus two x cubed minus four x squared, and we're going to evaluate this from two to four. Okay, and we will do two pi times, all right, we get a negative 64 plus, that'll be 128, and we'll get a minus 64, and we're going to have a minus, we get 2 to the 4th over 4, that's going to be negative 4, we're going to get a plus 8, right, uh, plus 2, should be plus 16, uh, minus, we get 4 times 4, which is 16, all right, and we're going to get those 16s cancel out, uh, we get negative 64, negative 64, 128, so we're just left with a negative, negative 4, which is going to be positive 4, giving us 8 pi. All right, so really, I mean, that's just an application of shell method, okay? We, we figured out that we had to use shell method because we couldn't use disk or washer. And honestly, if you can't use disk method right off the bat, I would just try to go immediately to shell because washer method can be a little bit more tedious, but in some cases, it actually can be a little more beneficial. Okay, so let's go to our next problem. All right, so we have our second problem up here. We're gonna find the volume of a solid obtained by rotating the, about the x-axis, the region bounded by y squared minus x squared equals one and y equals two. All right, so we are going to get that y equals one plus x squared, rad, sorry, rad one plus x squared when you do your algebra there to solve for y and we have y equals two. Okay, uh, it's pretty hard to, I mean, you can kind of picture what this will look like by doing like a, like an XY table, honestly, I mean, like it, it, some of these graphs are hard to picture in your head. So generally you'll probably get graphs that you can at least picture in your head on a test if you're not allowed to use a calculator, but I can tell you that this graph looks like this, we're going to get this and this, okay? So we're trying to find this region here. We call it R, all right? Now the region R is symmetrical on both sides of the uh, Y axis, okay? So when we revolve it over the Y axis, okay, the volume on this side of the Y axis is going to be equal to the volume on the other side of the y axis, okay? So when we do our integral here, let's just double it and have one of our bounds be zero, okay? So now let's get into what method we're going to use. All right, we have disk method, okay? We have disk method. Can we use disk method here? Well, this is the x axis, this is the axis we're rotating around. Well, I don't think so because we have space here, right? There's space here, so we're not going to be able to do that. Can we use washer method? Well, if we use washer method, our cuts are going to be perpendicular to our axis of rotation, and that works out well because we have things in terms of y, okay? And if we do washer method, we can easily just plug in our top and bottom. So let's go with that, all right? So if we did washer method, we know the area, the first thing we have to find is area. Area equals pi times big R squared minus little r squared. And area equals pi times what's our larger radius? Well, our larger radius is just going to be two. So two squared minus our little r squared. What's our little r going to be? Well, that's our smaller radius, which is just going to be rad one plus x squared quantity squared. Okay, when we do that out, we're gonna get area equal to pi times four minus one plus x. All right, and that means that area is going to equal pi times 
three, oh, actually that's gonna be a squared there, missed that, three plus x, or minus x squared, all right? So there you go, there's your area. Of each cross section, that's going to be your area. Now we find our volume. So our volume is going to be the integral of, well, we gotta figure out what our bounds are gonna be. We know we're integrating with respect to x, all right? We're using washer method, we have a horizontal axis of rotation. So we're gonna be integrating with respect to x. Now, we need to find what our points of intersection are going to be. We need to know where one plus x squared is going to equal two. Well, honestly, you could just think about this one. I mean, yes, you can do all the, I mean, you can solve by squaring both sides, but you can also think about it as, and I can just solve it, I guess, because I'm already doing it, uh, minus one minus one x equals plus or minus rad three. But you can also solve it like, okay, what's going to, uh, what's the square root that gets me two? Well, that's four. So how would I get x squared to be four? All right, that's kind of the 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 me or sorry. How can I get x squared plus one to equal four? Now, that's kind of the things you got to think about in your head. They can make things go a little bit faster. Okay, and uh, you know since you're in Calc two now, all right, that's stuff that you can start to think about. Right, you don't have to write everything out anymore, okay? Now, here you go, you get your x equals plus or minus rad three. Now, as I said before, instead of doing your, your integral from negative rad three to rad three, we can just do this integral from zero to rad three and stick a two out in front, all right, because it's symmetrical on both sides of the y-axis. So, let's do our integral here. We get our volume is equal to two pi, times 3x minus x cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to rad 3. Now when we plug in here, 2 pi times 3 rad 3 minus, well, we get a rad 3 cubed, which is going to be 3 to the 3 halves, okay? Whenever you have something to the 3 halves, that's literally just itself times rad itself. Okay, so three rad three. All right, and you can do that out if you don't believe me. <laughs> All right, so we have that over three and our zero term is just gonna kill everything. So now we can just simplify this. We get volume is equal to two pi times three rad three minus rad three. So volume is equal to two pi times two rad three. Volume is equal to four pi rad three. All right, so that's literally the answer to our problem, okay? Uh, I wasn't aiming for super hard problems here, but I wanted to at least show you the, the choosing the method step, okay? Because on tests, you're most likely not going to be given like a, a method specific problem. So they're not gonna say, okay, use washer method or use shell method, okay? They're gonna say, find the volume by any method. So that's gonna be it for this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.